forward to this. We're going to do kind of a live coding example. Um, I have not coded this up yet, so we're probably going to make some errors. You're going to get some good insight into my thought process. And we're going to basically combine almost everything that we've done so far into one big query. Um, so, and, and try to do this if you can. Uh, we're going to start with the customer table. Uh, we're going to practice splitting text on a delimiter. So a popular use case would be if you have you know hundreds of thousands of customers and you have several customers from each company, if you don't naturally have accounts for each company with uh, children accounts, you might use uh, this kind of technique to automatically group email addresses based on domain. Then we're going to look at concatenating some text because sometimes you know first and last name might be separate or you want to just have a text field that's kind of unified. Then we're going to work through some more joins again just to get some better experience there. We're going to ultimately group based on country. Maybe we'll say, you know, U.S., not U.S. as a uh, kind of distinction. And then we'll say back to this correlated subqueries. We're going to get the most recent order date um, and the earliest order date for each customer. And maybe we'll look at the days since the most recent order. And we'll use uh, the current date. Uh, function or operator a little bit. So let's just go, let's just start. Let's uh, select all from customer. And what do we want here? Let's just, uh, why don't we get the, I'm gonna alias it as C. We're going to get the C dot customer ID. C dot first name, C dot last name c.email and uh, c.address id. That should do the trick for now. Uh, so the first thing, let's create a new field using a function called split part. And this is a string function available in Postgres. Uh, it takes a field you want to split apart. It takes a delimiter and it takes uh, like do you want the first part or the second part? Because when you split, you get two parts, right? By definition, when you split something. So the delimiter in this case, we're looking at email. So every email has an at symbol. That's the nice thing about emails. You don't need to use a regular expression. So let's run that. And here we see that we have jared.eli mark.smith. That's because we took the first part. Really, we want the email domain. So we'll just grab that real quick. And the unfortunate thing about this data set is that they're all the same domain, sequilacustomer.org. So in, in the real world, you would have Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, custom domains, .edu domains, government domains. So you could ultimately kind of group them however you'd like now that you have a column available. And uh, so that, that's a great, a great thing to understand. I'm trying to think of some other cases where you'd want to split text without a regular expression. Um, yeah, you know, just just keep it in mind. If you have something you can actually use as a delimiter, this is a lot easier than a regular expression. So, so we can uh, now we're going to concatenate some stuff. So, what if we wanted a last name, comma, first name, just as a column? So we could just jump in here and do that. So we could say c dot last name, and I think concatenate. Something to do with two pipes. Let's see what it does. Okay, yeah, so it's, um, that did the trick, but we need to separate it somehow. All right, there we go. So maybe add a little space. So yeah, the, the double pipe is basically the concatenate operator. And don't use double quotes, never use double quotes. That'll fail. It'll think you're, you're looking for another data type. So always use single quotes. Uh, almost as a rule when you're writing queries. So now we've got the um, as a last first, and we'll just do that. So great, now we're gonna try to get the country data in here. And if I recall, we're going to, uh, we're gonna have to do a couple of joins. So right now we have an address ID. There's an address table here on the left. So let's just start joining. Um, left join address a on a dot address id equals c dot address id 
And that address table is going to get us a city ID. And since we have a city table, that's probably a good place to continue joining. Let's do a left join city CI, because we already have C for customer on CI dot city ID equals mm, a dot city ID. Let's make sure that worked. All right, so now we have a city uh, on CI. What's in that table we can get? Uh, the city. So let's just see what it is. Uh, CI dot city. All right, San Bernardino. Some of these look familiar to me. I'm in Colorado. Maybe some of you around the world are more familiar with, with other ones. Maybe they're not even real, I don't know. But they're cities in any event. Now, to get the country, uh, the city table has a country ID, so I'm assuming there's a country table. And right, there is a country table. So again, we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep on joining. Uh, country, I'm gonna call it CO on CO.city ID equals uh, CI.city ID. And then we're, excuse me, and then we're gonna have to bring in the C dot, I'm sorry, C O dot, I assume they have a column called country, C O dot country. Let's see if that works. Country C O on C O. Ah, oh, maybe. What are we joining here? So left join country CO country ID. How are we joining that? Left join city on city ID equals a dot city ID, right? And this is what happens. Sometimes things get a little bit confusing, but just stop and think. I see what I've done here. That's not really a, a thing. Let me just back out of this and make sure it's working. Okay, so we've got the city. Um, the city table is giving us the, uh, the country ID. So we do have a country ID. Let's just make sure we have that here from city. Okay, we do have the country ID there. Um, now we're going to left join country co on ci country id equals presumably co country id make sure that works great and from the country table we're just going to get country so we'll add co country all right great so what did we want to do here before we start grouping on country, why don't we tackle the, uh, the problem of getting the customer's most recent order date and their initial order date. Um, then we can deal with grouping on country and counting the customers by country and developing a case statement around it. So right now in this query, this entire query, we have a customer ID and we know in the payment table we have a, a customer ID and a payment date. So why don't we just start with a correlated subquery here. And the thing we're, you know, keep in mind here in the outer table, we're going to use the C.CustomerID and on the inner table, we're going to use P.CustomerID. So we're going to say uh, select uh, min p dot payment oops, date from payment p where uh, p dot customer id equals c dot customer id and this should give us the first order as cust min order date. Let me just uh, do two lines here just to clean it up a little bit. Maybe it even looks worse. All right, great. So now we actually have a column here for the customer's first order date. 
And if you'd like, uh, just pause this for a moment, try to get their most recent order date. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to copy this down. And all you have to change is the argument, max. Okay, so now we have the, uh, scrolling over a bit here, we have the min and the max. And just, you know what, don't, don't give it the same name. Let's call it cust max order date. Excellent. And you know what, we're going to clean it up a little bit more. We're just going to throw a date on it so we don't have the timestamp. And just sanity check it, the minimum should never be more than the maximum. Um, as a, a good rule of thumb is as you're learning SQL, always make sure that the basic things are, are kind of working there. And what else did we want to do with dates? We said um, days since the most recent order. So here, let me show you something. I'm just going to add another column called current date. And that's today, 11-27-2016. So I could subtract current date uh, and their max order date. So I could just take this and subtract it out and call it days since order, recent order. Let's see if that gives us back an interval. Yeah, that's given us back uh, the, the count in days here. So, and it makes sense because this was almost 10 years ago now. So that's, uh, that's an easy way you would get to all these uh, interesting date calculations. We have interesting correlated subqueries going on. And let's just top it all off real quick and do some group by on country. And let's just... Uh, what do we have here? We're going to use this as our table. Let's just see how many customers we have in the U.S. versus outside the U.S. So I'm just going to, you know, let's just do this. Select t dot country count from and call the whole thing t group by one order by two descending. All right, so now we have this large table of countries. And, you know, we could just do this. We could say, instead of t.country, I'm just going to use a case statement around t.country. So I'm going to say case when uh, t.country equals United States, then USA, else uh, rest of the world, and as a geo type. So that should probably work. And I forgot my comma here. Great. So now we have uh, 563 customers in the rest of the world. Uh, 36 in the U.S. This is a very international business. Uh, maybe that's why they're doing so well. And there you have it. We had a, uh, a pretty good example of uh, almost everything we've learned so far outside of row number. But um, hopefully you enjoyed this one.